Hi, it's Julie Chavez with the Jumpstart program at Truckee Meadows Community College. Today, I'm going to show you how to complete the Jumpstart permission to enroll form. Now, I want you all to pay close attention to this tutorial. Even if you have taken Jumpstart classes in the past, we do have a new form for spring of 2021. So we just wanna make sure that you all know how to access it, how to successfully complete it so that you are able to request enrollment for spring of 2021. I'm going to share my screen really quick and take you to the very first step. So I want you all to start by going to the Jumpstart homepage. So you're just gonna go to jumpstart.tmcc.edu. This is a great place to start. Again, if you need additional information about the Jumpstart program, um, student roles and responsibilities, this is where you can find all of that information. For today, I'm going to scroll down and find the steps to enroll for Jumpstart students. And we are going to go step-by-step step and show you how to complete a permission to enroll form. So I'm gonna go to step number three, permission to enroll form. A friendly reminder that whether you are a new Jumpstart student or whether you've been doing Jumpstart classes for two, three, four semesters, you are required to complete a permission to enroll form every single semester. This is your uh, pathway to registration in this case for spring of 2021. But again, if you are going to be requesting permission for summer or fall of 2021, there will always be a permission to enroll form that you have to complete. So you always wanna take care of it early. Um, the sooner you get the form to us, the sooner the process starts and the sooner that you can get enrolled in your classes. So this is the uh, Jumpstart Permission to Enroll homepage. I do encourage you all to please take your time, go over the important information. Your parents do need to be with you when you complete the form because parent uh, signature is required. Uh, and there are no exceptions to that. So please, please make sure that you are with your parents when you complete the form. You are going to need your 10 digit TMCC student ID number. Um, you gotta, you know, I always recommend have your TMCC admissions letter uh, right next to you because you can find that all, all of that information right there and it makes it just so much easier to complete the form. And when you are ready to begin, you are going to find two options to complete the permission to enroll form. Option number one, is or traditional PDF file. Um, you can go ahead and type this in, print it, uh, take it to your parents, they will sign, you will sign, and then your counselor has to sign. Please do not submit this form to the dual credit office unless all the signatures are there, otherwise it'll just be returned to you. Um, it's really, really important that you complete every single question. Do not leave any empty blanks. Um, again, some students really like the PDF file and if that's what you prefer, okay. Um, but we do have some high schools that only accept the online form. So my recommendation for all of you is to use the option number two, which is to submit an online permission to enroll form. The online permission to enroll form uh, looks like this. So when you click on it, it's going to require that you, um, in, that you type in some information so that it finds your TMCC account. Um, something to be very um, careful about when you complete this form is that the information that you type in here has to be identical to the information that you provided TMCC when you apply for admissions. So for example, in my case, I go by Yuli, right? That's what I, I prefer to be called Yuli. Um, but that's not my, my full name. Uh, and that's not the name that I used when I applied to TMCC. So if I use Yuli, the form is never going to recognize me and it's not going to allow me to move forward. So I have to make sure that I'm using my full name, right? Yuliana, same with my last name. I have two last names. If I only use Chavez, uh, it's going to give me an error message. It has to be my full last name. So again, in my case, I am Chavez Camarina. Um, so if I type in anything other than my full name that I used when I applied to TMCC, this form is not going to work for me. It's going to give me an error message. It's going to kick me out. Same with a birth date. Um, you know, I, unfortunately, if you made a mistake with your birth date when you apply to TMCC, it's not going to recognize you. So you have to make sure that you have that information handy. Again, 
um, look at your admissions letter, you'll be able to find all, all of that information there. But really important to take your time and make sure that you use the same information that you provide at TMCC when you apply for admissions. So when you do um, type in that information, it'll take you to the form which looks like this. So you're going to go ahead and fill in some very simple information. Are you a homeschool student? Yes or no. Um, and, uh, what high school are you from? Your um, high school ID number. Uh, what's your current GPA, and so on and so forth. If you are a homeschool student, we do require the that you attach the notice of intent to homeschool form. So that's going to be the only difference if you're a homeschool student versus not. Also, homeschool uh, students, we do not require counselor um, information because your parents are the only authorization that we require. So that does make it a little easier. But if you're in Washington County School District or perhaps you are a Nevada State student, then what we want to do is uh, complete the, the rest of the information. So you are required you are required to provide your high school counselor's information. So we're gonna need their first name, last name, phone number, and the most important part, which is their email. You have to know their email. Um, this form is going to be automatically routed to your high school counselor. So if you fail to provide uh, an email address or you make a mistake when you type the email address, your counselor will never receive the form and your permission to enroll form will not be processed. We need counselor approval. Um, your counselor gets an email with your form. They will review it and they will approve it. And then the Jumpstart program knows that we can proceed to, to review your request for enrollment. But that step doesn't happen until your counselor has had, an, has had an opportunity to review your form. Again, if you make a typo here or if you, um, you know, give us an incorrect email address, that form is just never going to go anywhere and you will never be enrolled. Uh, you will also be asked to please provide, um, you know, parent information so you can use your, your legal guardian, whoever is your legal guardian's information should go here. They will receive copies of um, any emails that are related to this particular form. So once again, we want to make sure that you are accurate. The next section is what, um, you know, tells us what classes you need to enroll in. Um, so you're going to tell us what semester you are petitioning enrollment for. In this case, we are looking at the spring semester. You'll notice that there is no winter option. That is because winter is part of spring. So whether you're trying to look for a traditional spring class or a winter class, you will select the spring semester. And then the next section, again, really, really important. We need to know what classes you want to take. Um, we are going to require the five digit class number and the class name, as well as the class um, meeting days and times. So here you can add more classes, you can remove them. You can petition up to five classes per form. Uh, really more than that, it just gets really overwhelming. So that's, that's probably the max that I would personally recommend, but you know, every student is different and you have to do what's best for you. Um, students sometimes get confused and ask, well, how do I find the five digit class number? So I am going to show you. So uh, for this, I want you all to go to my.tmcc.edu. Um, that's your TMCC student uh, uh, information. If you are having issues with your TMCC username and password, please, please call our Welcome Center at 775-673-7111. They can help you retrieve your username and your password. You are going to need that information to log into your TMCC account. So we are going to log into my account so I can show you how to find um, the five digit class number. So when you are in your account, we are going to go into search for classes. Again, really important, you gotta make sure that you're looking at the spring of 2021 semester. If you give us fall of 2020 classes, your form is going to be denied because that semester is almost over. So we gotta make sure that we're looking at spring of 2021 options. Um, I'm going to, in my case, um, I'm gonna look for English 101. So I'm gonna select the subject, uh, look for English. And again, you could be looking for mathematics, communication, psychology, whatever it is. And just for, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm using English 101. And then I'm going to search. Okay. 
and here are all my options. So I can go into uh, the schedule and can start looking through those classes. Um, you will find three different types of classes this semester at TMCC. The first type of class is what we know as in-person traditional classes. About 40% of our classes at TMCC will be in person for the spring. So when you select a class or, you know, as you are, um, you know, looking at all the class options, you want to pay really close attention to this instruction mode. The instruction mode will tell you whether the class is in person, online or, or web live. And I'll show you an example of each class in just a minute. So I know for sure this class is in person. I can see the room number. I can see that I'm meeting on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 to 9.15. My instructor, when the class starts, when the class ends. Um, so if that's the class that I want, perfect. Here is my five digit class number. So I can just copy and paste that into my form. I can also find the meeting days and times here. So I'm good to go, right? Um, Again, just some other examples of a class that is uh, completely online. And I, you know, it's really easy to find these classes because you, there will be no time, uh, no information listed for day and time. The location is always online. And again, if you just want to make sure, you can just click on the class in the instruction mode. This is a web course, a synchronous, um, completely online, no meeting days and times. So that's a good option for, for a lot of students. And then the final um, option that I want to show you are classes that have meeting days and times, but check this out. The location tells me that it's web-based. That's kind of weird. What does that mean? So if I go into the class, you'll be able to see that the instruction mode is web live, synchronous, meaning that the class has virtual meeting days and times. So you're not going to go in person to class, but you do need to be available on the days and times listed because there will be class held virtually, most likely through Zoom, but you always want to uh, check in with your professor when the semester starts, they'll give you instructions. So those are all really, really good options. I guess before we go back to the form, um, just one last note about uh, the meeting dates. So if you are a student that's looking for a winter class, um, check out the meeting dates for each section. So you'll see that some classes start on December 21st and then on January 14th. They also have the winter note. Those are your winter classes. So you can tell the difference between your regular spring class and your winter class simply by reviewing the meeting dates. So pay close attention to that. Again, once you uh, review the schedule and you find the class that you want, you can go back to your uh, permission to enroll form and, and fill this out. Um, again, five digit class number, uh, class title, meeting dates and times. The final section is where your parents come in, and these are the acknowledgements. There are uh, rules and responsibilities that Jumpstart students agree to when they decide to take a college class. Friendly reminder that you are uh, requesting permission to take college classes, and college classes have, um, you know, they're very different than, than what a high school curriculum looks like. Also, friendly reminder that once you start taking your college class, the student should be the only point of contact with college professors. Parents and guardians and friends should never um, you know, email or contact college professors. That is the responsibility of the student and the student only. Uh, so uh, parents and students, please go through the acknowledgements, letting us know that you agree to be part of our program, including our uh, parent and student roles and responsibilities. Um, you will uh, sign, your parents will sign, and you will submit the form. So once your form is submitted, it will go to your high school counselor, and then your high school counselor will approve it or deny it. They have the option to do both. If they approve it, uh, the form will come to us, and then we will process the enrollment. Um, enrollment for the spring semester for most students starts around uh, November 19th. So if you are watching this video before or after, just make sure you get the form done as quickly as possible. We will uh, begin to register students very, very soon. Um, but again, we can't start the process until we get the permission to enroll form with counselor and parent approval. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, email the dual credit program at dualcredit 
at tmcc.edu. Email is uh, by far the easiest way to get a hold of us. So again, questions, concerns, or comments, please send us an email at dualcredit at tmcc.edu. Have a great day.